an alteration considering the day. And um, it has been a great day. It's really been an important day for the call. Absolutely important. Yeah. And the reason why it's gone so well is because of the individual soldiers we had on parade today that actually did what you asked of them as, as a group. And they were just superb from start to finish. So, first of all, congratulate the individual soldiers who paraded today. And thank you for acknowledging that. It's really important. And these things don't come together overnight. In fact, it's been somewhat of a, a journey, but it's been a great journey. And uh, to get to where we've got today, it's been uh, it's been a, an effort from a, a, just a lot of individuals and a lot of units, and in fact, the entirety of the corps that has come together to ensure that as we make these journeys, we make these changes, that it all becomes part of our heritage and history. And it's really important that we do that. Not only as we move forward, and that's why today I feel was such an important occasion, is that we acknowledge really what, where we've come from. And you know, in a lifetime, it, it will be the only time we ever see a transition of a core banner for all those in this room. And for individual soldiers, I, I think it's important for those that command them at the junior leadership and the senior leadership group to actually just remind them over recent, uh, over you know, the next little period of time to um, just remind them of the import of, uh, of what they've been involved in because they did such a wonderful job. Under, in fact, pretty difficult circumstances. You know, Brisbane's not a pleasant place to, place to be parading in November, but they did, um, did a great effort. And I think the weather was kind to us this morning with that, and this afternoon with that breeze. But it was again well done. And I, I'd just like to also mention some individuals and some units. It's been, and don't get me wrong, the entirety of the core has been involved and behind this activity and for others to allow those individuals to put in the effort and to ensure that the history and the heritage of the core is is properly acknowledged. I'd like to thank 2HSB which has been the sponsor unit for that. It's really been a wonderful job that they've done. I really, really acknowledge it. And I'd like to also, and I, I mentioned and I spoke to them earlier uh, when they were all formed, the Brisbane Army Band, because uh, for a drumhead service and a, uh, a banner, banner service, it's really integral that the band that you have that runs out of activity understands and knows what they're doing. And I think you'll all agree that the band today was absolutely superb. <laughs> Also, the, the parade commander and the parade RSM. Superb jobs. Complex, complex parade. <laughs> and the support that they received through the RSMs of the Corps. Absolutely great. It's just not a single effort. <laughs> I'd like to just finish by some of the some of the comments that we received, genuine comments from the Chief of Army and the RSM of the Army, who was seriously, seriously impressed, not because the medics could do it reasonably well, but because this was as good a parade as they would come across. And that's really something from genuinely from the Chief of the Army who indicated that to me and others, as well as some of more belligerent one stars within the uh, organisation.
organisation. <laughs> 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 You also indicated begrudgingly, yeah, you did all right. <laughs> and it's been, it was a bit of a journey as to where we go after, yeah, the, the Queen Mother for the Corps, as you, you all know, has been an absolute icon. The icon. It's what we know. And, you know, we struggle as an organisation to, um, to really think through and determine where we should go uh, with our heritage and our future, given where we've come from with the Queen Mother. And I, I hope you will, but I, I firmly agree after what, uh, what we received in the response and having the, our new Colonel-in-Chief there today with her involvement and her excitement and her true commitment to her role as our Colonel-in-Chief, I'm absolutely convinced we've made the right choice. I really do. Because she is committed to her responsibility and her role in that, in that position. And uh, I think it's incumbent upon us going forward. And we have the opportunity when we have a Colonel-in-Chief who's, um, who's located here, close to, to keep her and her successors involved in their activities. And I think it's incumbent upon us to do it, in fact, because then she and her future successors will become part and parcel of our traditions and values. And those are really important things for us to cherish. And uh, we come from humble beginnings as a core to an organisation now that, you know, for, a, for a small defence force, I have no doubt whatsoever, and you know, we, we say this when we travel and, and discuss with our coalition partners, and we're part of our NATO groupings now that we're very proud of, as well as our other partners, that for a small defence force, the Australian Defence Force is well and truly and within the defence health environment, we are well and truly regarded. And you should all be justly proud of that because you are the individuals that have ensured that our values and that our training and our initiatives and the fact that we, we don't stand still, we, we, we build on what we have and we ensure that we remain and continue to strive for the best practices that we can put in place to support our soldiers, sailors and airmen. But it's a continuing journey and traditions are absolutely important. Now we have units here in Australia, in the Australian Health Army Health Service, that do still trace their heritage back to the shores of Gallipoli and that's important for us. And as we're making some of these changes to health structure within the Australian Army Health Services and the broader uh, Defence Health Services, it's important. And we have, we have actually acknowledged, it's important that we understand and acknowledge the heritage of those previous units. And as we restructure, we've actually had it's not a bad tune, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't mind, come forward. I'm going to change mine to you. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, we tried to bloody write them off once, but we'll have to try again. <laughs> It, we, it, it, it's, it's an organisation that does continue to strive for excellence and we need to ensure that we maintain our excellence. And as we go through those change processes, both within... You've got the message now. <laughs> within the, the single service and the joint environment, I would, 
I would encourage you to embrace those changes because they are ones that are really concentrating and the emphasis is on us developing quality systems throughout the defence health environment that will retain our workforce, not just a contracted or APS workforce, but retain our uniformed workforce, which is why we are all here. I'd um, a bit reluctant to pick out individuals because you're always going to miss some out. But um, I, I think as a, as a core, as a, as a core organisation, I'd like to, before I mention individuals, just place again emphasis on the fact that the history of where we come from and how it is continued to be supported by, by individuals of the core associations to ensure that that history and heritage is understood is so important and paramount to, to us as a core. And I'd like to thank those individuals who give their time and effort, you know, all completely unpaid time and effort, to ensure that we as current serving members and future serving members really get to understand the individuals and the efforts that have gone into making what we are today. Just before I finish, I'd like to just pick out one individual uh, and I, I want to mention John, John Strasky, first of all. And John, you know, is, has been just the enthusiastic backbone behind the development of many of the core association uh, website capabilities that have enabled us to communicate the way we have. But more than that, he's been the individual who's ensured that, that we maintain and have a, a site where we can all go to to understand our history. And John, as you all know, well, maybe not all of you know, but uh, John is, is quite unwell at the moment and because of the fact he's, he's in hospital in Sydney under treatment, was not able to uh, attend the weekend. But not only that, when I saw John on Monday to uh, wish him the best in hospital, you know, this is the nature of the man. He said, well, make sure that you don't just let my dinner ticket go and, and not be used. Make sure it gets donated to an individual soldier who's been on parade and has done a great job. So that's the sort of guy that we're dealing with. That's the sort of values at the core that I, I think you can be justly proud. So we wish John all the best. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. So just in finishing, I'd, I'd also like to mention uh, Smithy, John Smith, who's here tonight. John, thank you very much for everything you've done and your team here at um, in Brisbane. Again, there has to be a a bunch of people in one location this to, to pull it all together and John has really given tirelessly to ensure that this particular weekend activity works well. Um, we continue our journey as an organisation. The Defence Force continues to be extremely busy on operations. We as an organisation, which is the health services and particularly tonight the medical corps, we are a vital part of that call. And you, you know that because of the changes we've made, because of the fact that we continue to strive for excellence, that we have medics out there, that the support that we provide to our troops on operations, you all know starts and finishes with the quality of our medics. That's the way I've always thought about it. It's, you know, it's the pre-hospital care it's the quality of the medics that really make a difference. And you know, that's now been supported by all the evidence after these years that comes forward now and shows that unless 
those particular individuals can do what they need to do in the most effective manner in those first 10 or so minutes, that we as the more advanced healthcare providers really don't get a shot at them. So I, I finish on that note because it's where I started my career in the Defence Force, working you know, in infantry battalions, and I've had the privilege to move right through you know, the prestigious positions of the Corps and of the organisation of Defence. But um, it wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for the medics that I've had the privilege and pleasure, absolute pleasure to work with. And I, I, I thank them for that. And I also look forward to tomorrow at 14.30 when we lay up our Queen Mother's banner and then we get together, please do, at 17.30 unless somebody screams that I've mentioned the wrong time. <laughs> and again, I'd like to just, last comment, thank you all for making the effort to come tonight to share what is such an important occasion for us. Good evening. Mm -hmm.